Hi, everyone. I am Andre Annette, and welcome to this week's session of Healing from the Inside Out. And today I have a special guest with me, Erica Faith Dwyer, and she teaches people how to manage chronic stress. And for me, someone in healthcare, this is incredible because stress leads to every form of disease. It amplifies it. So we're going to visit with Erica today, and she's going to tell us how through movement and meditation and yoga, she helps people reduce or eliminate chronic stress. So please help me welcome Erica Dyer. Hello, my love. How are you? Hi, I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm good. Not 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 stress free, but <laughs> definitely. <good. laughs> Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate uh, oh, it. It's a pleasure. I think that the, it, your service is so well needed. So I'm someone who had several autoimmune diseases and um, I had always been able to manage them with, with diet and lifestyle. And then when um, I lost several family members, and was under a lot of stress at work, you know, because I'm I'm a nurse as well. I mean, wow, what happens in my body? It was it was crazy. So learning to get my life back and my health back was all about managing stress, especially with autoimmune. So I know there's a lot of people out there that still don't understand the connection. So can you talk a little bit about yourself and why this got you started on this journey yeah uh, on this journey um I was in my 20s and I had just gone through a divorce and multiple miscarriages and I was really like depressed and stressed and sad and I went to a woman for help and she started teaching me about the visualization meditation channel. And I learned how to kind of tap into my own healing potential from within and tap into forgiveness for multiple different, you know, situations and relationships in my life. And I was really moved by the profound effects of learning how to meditate and visualize and how that really helped to enhance my well-being and all areas of my life. So I, I initially went there for a personal reason, but it really helped me um, begin to thrive and relax and trust life's process in all areas of my life, from my career, relationships, um, purpose, all of that. Um, and so I began to study into like, meditation and visualization this was like 20, 2006 and then I began to learn about the different channels of yoga because really that's just one limb of the yoga practice and a lot of people think of yoga and they think of you know moving the body moving the arms doing these different postures and that also is just one branch of yoga and so when you learn to combine all the different branches you're really really working from the inside out and the outside spirit. Can you hear me? Inside out healing. Yeah. Because your internet state connection is very unstable. It's going in and out, in and out. So I'm losing a lot of what you're saying. Huh. Okay. Yeah, it shows I have that it's fully online. Yeah, That's it's just it, you keep. It may I can hear mine. you just fine. I mean, mine is a, mine is a, okay too, but I see that you keep going in and out, and we're losing those mm -hmm. key concepts that I want to hear. So, uh, this, you yeah, were saying that back in two thousand and six, what this is what I did here back in two thousand and six that you started looking at the other legs of yoga and meditation and really studying it. And then you started going in and out. So can you fill in that gap for me? Okay. Again? Yeah. So then I just started, I went through a 200 hour yoga teacher training, and then eventually went to an additional 300 yoga teacher training that's healing emphasis yoga therapy, 
learning to heal from the inside out and the outside in. And so I thought, what a coincidence when I came across your work and your podcast channel of healing from the inside out, because it's really true. Like when we can tap into our inner knowingness and deep within ourselves, we can really start to learn what our body needs, what our mind needs, and kind of facilitate a deep healing from the inside out as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. A lot of people think of physical ailments as a body problem, and it's a mind problem. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, when you're in that 300 pound body, or when you have things going on with autoimmune and things like that, it really starts in the mind long before it starts in the body. So mm -hmm. I am a human body specialist who's been in the body for 40 years. And I can tell you that most of the diseases I come across started in the mind, if not all of them. So yeah. it's, it's really, it is about tapping into yourself. It is about that forgiveness you spoke of. So I appreciate that you mentioned that because a lot of people are holding on to trauma or past hurts, and that's really stopping them from moving on. And we don't, forgive for us i mean for them we forgive for us so mm -hmm. to let that go so that we can release because that negative energy is not good for our bodies so and yeah. people are just energy they don't understand that um this world is built on energy so everything that we put out there those positivity and, and negativity they do affect our inner selves you know so uh, I'm big on The Course in Miracles. I think I had told mm -hmm. you that when we originally met. And he talks about everyone really being able to tap into that infinite intelligence that we were given, that that's part of our, our humanness. And that so many people get stuck in the ego that they lose sight of that. So it is about coming back to that self that you spoke of so eloquently that and really tapping into that to to have healing. And certainly, like you said, if you're well, when, when I was in a body of 300 pounds, I certainly wasn't showing up in my family. I wasn't showing up the way I was prior in my vocation, in my relationships. So it does mm -hmm. impact all areas of your life, you know, because if you feel good on the inside, then you will project that on the outside. But for years, I didn't, you know, I, that depression you spoke of, that was me. I was, everything mm -hmm. in my life, Erica was great, but I was always sad. And I said, I don't, I don't know where the sadness is coming from. Everybody would be thrilled to have the life I have, but I'm always sad. I'm so depressed. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand it, you know, and that was a big part of the thyroid, the gut health, you know, all those things I was dealing with. But, you know, by tapping into myself and believing in myself that, you know, I'm not stuck in this body, I can create any change I want. It really helped me to move past that and really find that healing and very quickly, I might add. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, I have so many thoughts about what you just shared. I think one of the things people struggle with is this helplessness. They feel like they need something from the outside to fix the inside. Mm -hmm. But really, even if you go to a mentor or to a religious thing or to a workshop it, it's you that has to change it's you that creates the change it's it's you from the inside that really has the power to make different decisions and, and it's really about tapping into that healing feeling right if, if mm -hmm. we're in a space of possibilities if we're in a space of maybe we don't have all the answers but we're open that they'll be guided to us that we'll be guided to them um we can really it it's, it instantly shifts our feeling and our awareness and our presence. So it's the trust too. So a lot of people lose that self-confidence. So I think it's harder from 
a place when you don't believe in yourself to believe in something greater than yourself because mm -hmm. you're supposed to be the single most important person in your own life. And when mm -hmm. you lose that in your life and you're not putting yourself in that place, it's hard to look to someone else as having more ability than you, you know? So a lot of times I feel like when people do look outside of themselves and they're not really ready to to find those answers, it can hinder them more than help them. Because yeah. if they're not really ready to do that work, certainly when you went for help, when I decided I wanted help, we had to be in a place that we wanted more, that we believed, even if it was just a small piece of us that said, I deserve more. Mm -hmm. And and I'm gonna go for this to to really start that process to be able to trust, you know, that we we had some control in this. But a lot mm -hmm. of people, they're not at that point yet. They're just they don't believe that they have that ability, and they don't believe. I think to trust is to really believe in something better than yourself. Like mm -hmm. to when I get up in the morning, I'm grateful for the day and. Mm -hmm. I kind of know things are just going to work out and whatever I need to come to me will. And if it doesn't, then it wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I think when you live that way, there's a certain ease and grace in, in your day that I certainly never felt until I started really feeling into gratitude and, and being grateful for what I did have. Because for many years, I looked at what I didn't you know, and, mm -hmm. and until I was comfortable with where I was at and what I had to be grateful for, I don't, I don't think that I would have changed. I don't think I would have been ready or kept what I had found. What are your thoughts? Uh, I love that, Andrea. Um, I, I think too, sometimes what happens is, especially as women, we really we're the nurturers we're the givers and sometimes we really crave you know connection and appreciation and once we've kind of gone down that down world downward spiral and we're kind of hopeless and we're stuck and we're really in in the darkness of kind of life for a moment then we start making it all about us like this person didn't do this this person didn't do this and we kind of have that victim mentality but once we kind of can step aside from our own lives and kind of think about you know that it's all working out for the highest good for all and not it's not just about me right it's about all of us there's so many people here and we're all looking for love and connection and appreciation and enjoying our lives and so when we can really um know that life's working out for all of us and again like you so well said trusting trusting that whatever happens today is just as it's supposed to be. And if something doesn't happen, it's just not meant to be. And maybe it's not forever. Maybe it's just for a no for right now, you know, and kind of stepping out of the controlling nature, stepping into that ease, that flow, that in alignment kind of energy where you do your best, you stay open to the possibilities and you do what you can and you let it be enough can really get us a long way. <laughs> um, well, I think that I think that helps with the stress of it too because I think I was a uh, one of those people that made a lot of lists or I had a lot of things that I had to get done mm -hmm. in the day, every day. My days were always jam-packed and full and when I let go of that mentality and said, you know, there's an order of importance here. What is it necessary for me to get through today that is is going to help me to do what I need to do, right? Whatever it was, mm -hmm. you know, if I needed to go food shopping, well, what what do I need to get through to to make to be able to plan those meals, right? So right. when I broke it down into simpler, smaller steps, it just became very easy. I, I mean, 
when I started on the weight loss journey, okay, I was looking at well over a hundred pounds I wanted to lose. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of people tell me I couldn't do it, which always gave me incentive because I am that watch me girl. Oh yeah. Right. Watch me. <laughs> I'll show you. So, um, but I, you know, when people look, when people think they want to lose weight or they're going for a bigger job promotion or whatever they're after in life, mm -hmm. they, they look at this big picture of all these things that they have to do in order to get it. But I found that when I broke things down into small parts, my business is pounds to go. Mm -hmm. That's what I told myself all the time. Everybody told me I should name it after myself. I said, but why? I, I said that that name has meaning to me because I kept telling myself five more pounds to go, five more right. pounds to go. And every yeah. week, that's what I did. I only focused on those five pounds. And before I knew it, it was 125 and then it was 160 mm -hmm. and, and I was mm -hmm. done. And I, I've been able to keep it off all these years because I forced myself to learn where the problem was. It was my behaviors. It was my habits. So I knew that I had control because I had given that away, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, you know, when you break things down into smaller pieces and trust the process, and so many people don't want to trust the process. If you don't, I'm not going to lie and say that when I wasn't getting things immediately, to, <laughs> it wasn't upsetting. It was, I had tantrums all the time, but I knew that I had to keep going. Because I knew that the life that I was living at that point wasn't condu conducive to a long life or a happy mm -hmm. life or a healthy life. Yeah. Right. So I congratulations to, to you. That's a nice. big accomplishment to to get it off and keep it off, right? And then to take take that information, take that journey, and use it to help other people. Like, what a blessing. Thanks. I, I love what I do. It, it's a big part of who I am as a nurse. But I think that the stress is a big part of it. Well, stress is big, big in gut health. It's big in thyroid health and it's big in weight loss. Mm -hmm. So yeah. essentially what you teach is going to help my my clients because when mm -hmm. I tell them that stress stress is killing you, it's killing that diet. It's throwing mm -hmm. off all your hormones. They look at me like I'm the Mad Hatter, and I'm, <laughs> I'm. It it does throw off everything in your body because I think that you can better work through things in a state of calm, you mm -hmm. know. And and I love that you brought up visualization because that was definitely part of the journey for me. I had to see the person I was becoming mm -hmm. in order to get there. Yeah. So until I could vision, envision myself in that perfect weight at, mm -hmm. I I wasn't getting there. Yeah. It's really powerful. That's part of a yoga nidra practice. That's, it's been studied by scientists for a very long time and it's proven to reduce our blood pressure, re reduce our stress hormones. And at the beginning of the practice you do, you you visualize yourself as you want to be and you create an affirmation statement of, you know, whatever is important to you. I am living my best life. I am thoroughly and completely happy. I am healthy, whole and free. Like whatever the statement is for you that you're looking to embody and really bring into your life, um, you create this statement and you create a visualization of yourself. And then the meditation kind of walks you through systemically relaxing the body from head to toe or toe to head and learning. You really learn that you're in control of your nervous system. Once we've been in chronic stress for so long, we're just all the way up here all the time. It's easy to go off on people. It's easy to snap. It's easy to be triggered because we're just, we're, our baseline is already just way high above our healthy level. And if we stay there for too long, then all of a sudden we're going to shut down. 
we're going to go from the person who had all the energy to get all of the things done and handled everything to the person who's just stuck on the couch and has no motivation and can't move and really like their brain is cloudy. And it's what it is, is your nervous system is shutting down because it dealt with a high level of stress for too long. And so if we can get ahead of that, so when we start to notice we're really anxious, we're really triggered, we're really stressed out, and we can start to learn these relaxation and stress relief techniques, then we're going to save ourselves a lot of time, a lot of struggle from bouncing in and out of the highly wound state to a really shut down state to a highly wound state to a really shut down state because we can't enjoy our lives when we're in those two states. We really want to be centered and balanced and regulated where we can deal with the ups and downs, but they don't take over our lives and impact our energy intensely. You know, it just is more of a, a flowing practice and we're able to get back to our center and our happy place with ease and in a timely manner um i teach people how to take back their day throughout the day because that yeah. was that was big for me i had to learn how to start my day over several times a day yeah. <laughs> when it wasn't and a lot of people don't realize that you can start your day over at any time if it's not going good okay yeah. let's begin again so that's yeah. what i got out of what you just said because for me i had to uh in yeah. my line of work, people are going to piss me off all day long, but <laughs> right? I I can't let them take me out of myself. Mm -hmm. And because it's a practice, right? They, and sometimes yeah. we're going to fail and sometimes we're not going to get it right. And that's okay. When you learn to really, you kind of have to learn how to be a better friend to yourself and bring in some playfulness and some curiosity. And it, it just brings a whole different energy to the path that we're on it. If we if we're thinking to ourselves, Oh, man, I have all this weight to lose. I have all these things to do. Da, 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 da. And, and we're telling ourselves these sad stories, we're just bringing ourselves down even more. And then it's like, okay, well, wait, oh, I can play with losing two pounds this week, or five pounds this week, or I can play with bringing in a new fruit or a new vegetable or a new exercise and you make it more of like a playful, curious, I wonder what my body feels like today. Let's go walk and see, you know, if, if I change the pattern of my feet. So if my feet are normally out to the side, what happens if I start to make it so my, my second toes more in line with my knees or if my, I have more of an internal rotation, let's see what it would be like if I intentionally place my feet differently and just learning different ways that are free or low cost to play with our energy and play with our health so that we can start to get yeah. back some of our joy you know I yeah so you were saying that you also you go into seniors and, and you help <gasps> you help them tell me a little bit about yeah. that I love that yeah, so it just kind of, um, my dad has been on his dementia journey for almost 10 years now. We're getting close to the edge. He has a hard time walking, talking. Um, and there was a post on Facebook where someone was like, hey, I just moved my mom in with me and she has dementia and I really need someone to help, you know, come visit with her a couple times a week and make sure she's eating lunch and doing her exercises. And I was like, oh, that's me. That's me. And so I started working with her in October and her mobility has gotten so much better. Her posture is quite better. Um, she's been able to adjust. She moved whole, from Ohio to Arizona. So it was a big transition for her. Um, and so she's been able to, you know, kind of let go of some of the past and the repeating words of I want to go home, I want to go home, I want to go home. And part of that is we've worked with expressing it through our body, right. And I think even with, you know, dementia, a lot of the times there's, you know, unresolved trauma. I see many, many people who they're saying the same stories, and it's stuff from their childhood, either with the way they were treated, well, they, or they don't, their long-term memory is supposed to be, um, their short-term memory is supposed to be forgotten, but their long-term memory is not affected. So right. usually in dementia, I, I've worked with a lot of dementia patients. I would have grown women talking about picking up their children from, from the school bus. 
mm-hmm. and they would keep trying get to get to that bus and they needed car fare and um they tell us to redirect them but i yeah. found i found that kind of cruel because some in some instances they'd be looking mm-hmm. for someone who passed you know that that has gone on or di- you know died is what i'm i'm trying to say in a nice way yeah and when you why would i tell them and have them go through that trauma again and mm-hmm. again of of yeah. that loss of that death so in some instances i didn't recommend it um but yeah so they do they do lose that and yeah i think everything that we that we remember those strong memories mm-hmm. are created to are there are linked to some negativity, either extreme mm-hmm. happiness or mm-hmm. extreme sadness. I think on both ends of those those rounds, that those are the things that stay in our memory the longest. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, they, it's like they wired in our it's well, they wired in our nervous system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got started was just the post on Facebook saying, hey, I need help. And I was like, hey, that's me. You know, I have my finger pre- clearance card. I have my CPR, yoga therapy training. I would love to. And they live really close. And from there, you know, I've worked with people who have had strokes. I've worked with people who are independent and just need help, like doing some exercises, building back more mobility and maybe, you know, helping clean up the house a little bit for them or preparing some food. Um, yeah. So at this point, I'm really, I guess I should back, I did originally start going to like community assisted living homes and bringing yoga and sound healing there. But I found that it was easier to work with people one on one, I was able to get further with people when we could talk to each other, I could learn more about their story about where they have pain about where they can't move as well as they used to. And so that's really um, my soul, not my soul focus, because I'm all over the place. I just want to no, help. It's great. I want to help great. women. Yeah, I want to help women reset from being stuck and frozen and numb. And, um, and senior population with movement and mobility and I teach yoga classes at a couple different places so yeah well I think yoga is amazing for um people that that are in my class and um I think that it would benefit them Mm -hmm. because they do need to find that balance and that calm to keep Mm -hmm. what they have so a lot of people are looking for the destination and they're not focusing on the journey and, and what that's really like. And the journey really is the best part. Yeah. <laughs> the journey is, is the best part. So I would love to have you come and speak. You could speak on my platform. Um, you know, I would invite them if they came or in one of my groups or yeah, I would love I would to love have you. That. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. I can even share just a couple free resources for, you know, your clients, some meditations or like a little morning routine that's five, 10 minutes to kind of get the whole body, the joints all woke up and moving. Yeah, I would love that. Especially as we get older. (laughs) Yeah, it's important. You know, use it or lose it. It really is. Use it or lose it. (laughs) That's what what we tell people all the time. I'm pushing closer to that 60. So, but I'm I'm in really good shape today for, you know, an almost 60 year old woman. I I don't worry about Thanks. I mean, I, I try, but I do, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes every morning, I do something every morning because that's, that's for me, you know, so mm-hmm. I'm very um, specific with my morning routines. Like there were certain times of day, there were things that I had to do to stay on track and focus. You know, um, I do have the TV shows. I, I'm, I'm an elite coach for another platform. I have my own platforms. I write books. I do all these things. What? Oh, I said, where'd she go? <laughs> So I, I needed to protect my time. So a, mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know, I have friends that teach self-care 
And self-care mm -hmm. is part of what I teach, but I'm not the self-care expert like my girlfriend is. So mm -hmm. I've invited her to come in and speak to, because I think when people hear from the same person all the time, they kind of feel like, oh yeah, she's just saying this because, you know, <laughs> but self-care is a big piece of that. So I had it's to, cute. I was that yes girl. Mm -hmm. Andrew, can you sure mm -hmm. leave it over there? Hey, Andrew, yeah. can you do this? Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> and at the end of the day, nothing that I really needed to do for me was done. And then I I was filled with animosity and anger, and I couldn't be angry at mm -hmm. them because I was the one that said yes and raised my hand. So I had to start looking at that. So um, there's certain hours of the day I won't go on social media. I won't answer. Like I'll post something in the morning and. If I'm on my way to work and I have time mm -hmm. and because I do meditations, um, I take the train. I do meditations uh -huh. the entire way to work. Um, I listen to things that, that I love, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Troy Lavina. Lavinia, I think his name is. Uh -uh. I got to send you. Um, he actually has a platform. I met him, I want to say, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And he has such a calm about him mm -hmm. so he also teaches meditation but he teaches it as a as a group and he's been at it a really really long time and i do his meditations i find um because they're very geared towards certain steps that you want to take in your life and yeah. he helps you with the visuals and i always struggled with visuals now i'm a little better at it but I, I listened to those in the morning, but when I met him, met him on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I was automatically drawn to him. I said, look how calm he is. I want that. I said, I wonder how he got calm like that. And I, and I said to him, I said, you have this unbelievable calm about you. So they try to always get you on a call. And I said, sure, I got to show up and see if this guy is really, what he, what he looks like. <laughs> right? I got to know. Right? And I said, is this him, real? Yeah. And I said to him, <laughs> how are you so calm? His voice, everything about him is just like super calm. So I've taken, he calls it SOS. It's a daily 30. Mm. And um, I do that with him many times. I've gone in and done it again and again and again, because it does set me up like you said for those those mornings and my day just my day gets off to a better start and I noticed yeah. that when I'm not tuning into myself and I'm not doing things like that my day is like hell in a handbag you know so mm -hmm. I, I have to <laughs> I have to it does you know it's, yeah it's, it's practice it's not perfection certainly not definitely definitely yeah, I'd definitely be interested in learning more about him. And, and oh, you would uh, love him, love him. Yeah. And he does have speakers come in and talk to. So I can give you that information. He's great. He really yeah, is. Yeah, wonderful. I appreciate that. Thank you. you know, and I love that you do it every day. And the day you miss, like it, you can really tell the impact of, you know, your daily practice when you do miss one day or a couple days in a row. And you're just like, what is this craziness? You're just it's easy to get off track when you don't take that time in the morning to kind of tap in and center yeah. and ground in to, yeah, or just this is even the take, or even just taking the time for yourself. Yeah. Even if, you know, even if you do get away a day from the meditation that you take those, those few minutes, even without meditation, mm -hmm. just to center, calm, do those, mm -hmm. those breaths and, and do some visualizations of a calm place where you can put yourself in that space of calm, um, you know, because there's craziness everywhere. So you either move with it or, or you say you stay centered. Right. So I don't, right. I was that person that was always swaying. So I'm perfectly happy in that space now where I, I can mm -hmm. take my day back, you know, I was mm -hmm. one of those people that if someone upset me in the morning at 11 o'clock at night, that was still on my mind. Yeah. And I was, making myself, <laughs> I was making myself sick. And I said, yeah. this is not good. They're probably home sleeping and I'm the one that's sitting here annoyed. So right. it, it's definitely practicing. <laughs> God, far <laughs> from perfect. Far from perfect. But 
I love that you've addressed all of those things. And I think you're going to be a credit to your field. So I'm, I'm oh, really glad that you came in and, and shared the time with me today. Is there yeah. some place that people can go to find out more about you or a website that they, where they can connect? Yeah. yeah. So on my website, it's www.ericafaith.com. And I have a free little 25 minute, just meet each other, have a conversation. Um, I love just getting to know people who are curious about what I do or have something they'd like to share with me or kind of explore all the different options. On my website, I offer different classes, um, different yoga classes or grief classes. I also have like one-on-one -on -one sessions for people who are going through deep trauma and grief and need different ways to help kind of release some of that and tap back tap back into their true selves. Um, I also try to share a lot of information, mostly over on Instagram. And my Instagram handle is erica.faith.energy.alignment. And so my business name is Energy Alignment Services. And it's helping us get to the center, right? Working with whatever energy is present. If we have low energy, learning how to gain more energy. If we have really anxious, high energy, learning how to tone down our energy and coming right back to the center so that we can enjoy each and every day. Yeah. You are so going to love Troy. You remind me. Of <laughs> You're going to love him. You're like two peas in a pod. Really? <laughs> Really, maybe I'm that excited you guys to learn. Yeah. yeah, you you, you would absolutely love. Um, a lot of people that are in there are business owners, and uh -huh. they are people that don't understand like why they're not getting to people. So he makes you pick like five pillars. So I'll mm -hmm. just share this before we close out. Oh, you know, and then you can give me feedback. So he makes you decide the five areas of your life that are most important to you. Mm -hmm. So part of his practice is that we send love and gratitude to those mm -hmm. five areas every day. So mm -hmm. if it's your relationship, it depends on you. So for me, my health, you know, so it's my spirituality, then my health, you know, then, then my, my immediate relationships with my husband, then my personal relationships and then my business, my business, is last on that list because without the top, yeah, then there'd be no business, right? So yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so I try to do that, and sometimes I fall short, but I know that on days that I'm doing that, those mm -hmm. key areas of my life are flowing better, and yeah. maybe it's just because I'm more dedicated to putting more care in them. It's not because mm -hmm. the other people have changed any, you know, my right. husband's my husband all these years. He's not changing, right? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, uh, so it's just maybe I'm, I'm more focused on present because sometimes I'm not always present. So, mm -hmm. um, so that kind of helps me as much as it does anything else not just the relationships yeah. and things I'm working on but it kind of helps me see where I might not be present where in those areas I'm lacking not because it's very easy to look at the other people and say well this isn't working and that's not working like you said <laughs> but those situations when we're sending love and gratitude it, it does allow us that that time to really see why those are important to us and what they are bringing to our life and, and why we're grateful Definitely. and why we're happy. I think you really nailed it too. When you said, you know, first I got to work on my health, my spirituality, and then the people close to me and eventually the business, like kudos to you for sharing that because that's a really big thing. Um, but if, if the baseline and the roots aren't nourished well, then everything else is kind of hard to, to take off. And I think a lot of people try to do, to do it the opposite way, right? The outside and the business and then the relationships and then the, so kudos to you for sharing that and figuring that out because it's really important. It's yeah. a process. I'm not, I'm not perfect. Like <laughs> I, said. I want to thank you so much for coming in. I yeah. am going to thank all of our viewers for coming in and sharing this this time with Erica and myself. It was absolutely um, amazing to have you. And 
Have a good day.